Hi everyone, in this tutorial I'm going to share six of my top tips and techniques for adding more realism to your graphite drawings. Now when I planned this tutorial I was going to use six individual clips of different portraits to demonstrate each of these techniques that I want to share. However, as all of these six processes are very much dependent on the one before, I want to show this in a start to finish clip. So here we're going to be focusing on the ear of this French Bulldog puppy and the first thing that is really important is starting off with an accurate outline. Now I personally don't like to have too many sketch lines early on because I feel like it can get a little bit confusing. I want to pick out the main structures in this case of the inner ear and the outside shape. Once I know I've got that accurate, I can then freehand the rest of that in and you're going to see that as we go through the rest of this tutorial. So the second element and one main technique that I use on every single one of my portraits is a good base foundation. Now here I am just using some graphite powder to apply my main lights and darks. This is purely a mapping in process, I'm not focusing on any kind of detail. I am using a paper blending stump here and you can see that I'm varying how much of that graphite powder I'm applying. I'm not putting all of my darks in one area, I'm looking at that reference photo and studying exactly where the shadows and highlights are positioned. Now this is something that I talk a lot about in all of my tutorials. The lights and the darks and where they are, are not random. They follow the underlying bone and muscular structure. Now in this situation, the way that the bulldog, the, the ear is curved at the center and then it comes out on either edge, I have to make sure that I replicate that and that's all through my lights and my darks. Now as we build up the layers here, you're going to see that come more to life, but you really want to be making sure that we're studying that photograph as closely as we can. Although we're going to be building the layers so there's a lot that we can change throughout this process, I find that if this first base foundation is accurate, the layers that we apply on top are also more accurate. We're not having to guess because we're already taking the time to map that in at this stage. And I will continue to work with that blending stump until I get to this stage. This is a really good foundation and I now feel really confident that I can start using my graphite pencils and putting in the first proper layer of fur. And this brings me on to one of the most important aspects of every single portrait and that's layers. So my biggest tip for this area is make sure that you have enough layers. So once I've put in that time to make my base foundation, I don't just want to use one layer with my pencils. This is all about building up the depth gradually. So I might use five to 10 layers with my pencils depending on the fur texture that I'm drawing. This won't require quite so many because most of this has got the skin texture at the back with the hair at the bottom and the sides of the ears. But with that in mind, I still want to make sure that I'm adding the right amount of layers for the sort of realism that I'm going for in this piece. Now this size portrait was only a 6 by 8 inch, so it was quite small, but I did that deliberately because I wanted to show my Patreon members how you can still add a lot of detail and create a photorealistic portrait when working on that smaller scale. Now if you would like to see the full real time from start to finish tutorial, it is available on my Patreon channel. You get the reference photo liner and material list. It's a perfect one to draw along to. And it's got a voiceover while I'm working. So every single process is explained thoroughly in the moment. There is no parts that sped up or cut out. So if that is of interest, I'll link my Patreon in the description below. So now that I've got my main foundation of fur layers in, I'm going to start working with subtraction and erasing techniques. So I've got a few erasers that I like to use in different situations, but when I'm working on smooth blended sections or areas of skin, I do like using my putty eraser first. It's a little bit more of a subtle way of lifting the graphite and if you do then need to make that a little brighter, I like using my Tombow Mono Eraser, which is what I'm currently using here, to lift up even more of that. Now my biggest tip when you are working with anything that's particularly light in your reference photo, it's always worthwhile leaving the white of the paper visible so you know that you've got that as bright as what's potentially required. If you need to darken it up later on, you can do that very easily with a layer of your graphite powder. 
But if you do want an area particularly bright, like the reflections in the eye, I'll always leave the white of the paper showing. But with the inner ear, because it was more of a lighter grey rather than the white of the paper, I did take that decision to put some kind of graphite down all over that section and then remove that with that putty eraser to give me those subtle highlights. I do find that when I'm drawing ears, that's my go-to method. Now if you do have an area of graphite that's been a little bit more stubborn to lift off and remove, then the use of a battery eraser can work really well. You can see here how much of that graphite it's removing. Now when I do use this in this situation, I won't leave it like that because they do now look quite harsh. So you're then gonna to have to go back to your blending and softening techniques, which is what I'm using here with that smaller blending stump to soften out those edges. Now this brings me on to that technique and softening and blending is something that I will do throughout my layers. A few moments ago you saw I was using a green handled paintbrush. Now I was using that to soften out the layers of graphite underneath. Now my biggest tip when you are working with any blending or softening tools is don't over blend. This is something that can happen very very easily. We've taken the time to build up all of these layers so we don't then want to make those disappear by putting too much pressure or over blending with these tools. And lastly, one of the most important things with any portrait with any medium is the importance of contrast. You can see here that I've got my darks really dark, but I've also got my highlights nice and bright. This here is what's going to make that subject look three dimensional on our paper. So I really do pay attention to contrast from the very beginning all the way to my final details. It's something that we're always looking to improve with each layer that we add. So I really do hope that this video has been useful. If it was, I would really appreciate it if you could give it a like and a thumbs up because it makes a huge difference to my channel. I upload two to three videos to YouTube every week, so if you'd like to get notified of that content, then hit the subscribe and the bell button. If you've got any art related questions, feel free to pop them in the comments below because I'm more than happy to help if I can. And if you are interested in seeing this French Bulldog puppy tutorial all in real time, it's available on my Patreon now, which I will link in the description below. As always, thank you so much for watching.